Hey guys, Ed Bud here. I'm back today with a vlog documenting my training over the last couple of days and also answering some questions from the viewers about the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. If it's your first time here at my channel, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below as to when new videos are launched. So, a new week and some more miles in the Alpha Fly. I thought, let's start the week off and really treat myself. Let's have an extra Ferrero Rocher and just, you know, really enjoy these shoes while I've got them. Why leave them in the glass case? Six miles in total at six minutes, 55 per mile. So put the hammer down again. Although it doesn't really feel like you're doing that in these shoes. They certainly do seem to lower that perceived effort. Certainly when you push the pace. There was sparkly conditions out there today. Beautiful sunshine. And fortunately I wasn't pushed to throw myself into any bushes to get out the way of other people who refused to move off the path. I didn't have to dive into the river or anything like that today. It was very quiet. I decided to go out that a little bit earlier and that does seem to make a difference. So with those lack of obstacles, it was easier to get some faster paced miles in. I'll put some information up on the screen as to the splits. The Alpha 5 were feeling really great with those new Nike racing socks I purchased the other day. I kind of got them at the same time as the Fuel Cell TC and they really work well with this shoe. I got a size 11 to 12.5. I think it's, I don't know if it's large or extra large. I can't quite remember, but they work perfectly with the size 11 Alpha Fly. Ample toe room width wise as well. They just felt spot on. I think some people, when these do come out, will prefer a more racing type fit and maybe go down half a size. For me, where I fall between an 11 and an 11 and a half, I think that the 11 is perfect. So read into that what you will. So all the miles on that session in and around my target half marathon pace. Some a little below, some a little above, but I was really happy to see that. There was a bit more left in the tank, could have continued, I suppose, but I'm very conscious at the moment to ensure I'm not depleting energy levels too much. I recall running part of that route earlier this year, I think it was the end of January, as part of the park run. You remember when park runs were a thing, right? It's Saturday, it's 9am, it's park run time. Feels like an age ago already when they were happening. I've already missed that, you know. During that part run, my heart rate got up to what I call a sort of more race level up towards maximum, which is about 185, I think. I think it's about that. I do seem to struggle getting into that same mindset when I'm training or doing a time trial or something like that. I just can't seem to lift myself up to that same racing kind of level. It's a mental thing, I think. It's just like, Competition mode, I just can't seem to switch that on unless I'm in a race. At that part run, heart rate got to about 185 beats a minute during mile one where it's relatively straight. On mile two, you've got a little ascent and you know, obviously things are starting to hurt a little bit by then. So it kind of dropped down, I noticed, to about 165. And then there was a steady rise on mile three back up to that maximum heart rate. Really interesting stuff just looking at that. I don't think I'd ever looked at it. I've just been thinking about heart rate recently. Someone mentioned to me that my heart rate seemed very, very low for the paces that I've been running. And it does seem like that, but I think it's more a mental kind of thing. It's very odd. If anyone's got any explanations about any of it, let me know. I think perhaps playing relatively energetic music on a very regular basis for the last 20 years has really helped in terms of my fitness. I'm able to sort of regulate stress levels of exertion quite well. It's almost like on training runs and stuff, I'm in a sort of practicing mode where I'm at 70 to 80%, and then I only enter that sort of performance mode during a race. Certainly looking at those speeds I achieved in that part run, 6.33, I think it was 6.30 and 6.28 on each of the miles. I'm certainly capable of running faster, but I think that's getting towards uh, my absolute maximum, at the moment anyway. I think a more comparable race to the half marathon target paces that I've been running was that Blackmore Vale half marathon back in February. There was a grade adjusted pace there of 7 minutes 05 over the course of the 13.1 miles, but an average heart rate of only 155, so that's about... 10 beats per minute off of my tempo kind of heart rate that I've been running recently. So I think I do need to run a time trial of some distance soon so I can recalculate some of those heart rate zones. I think they're a bit off now. I think my fitness has increased and they're just not really relevant now. So some faster miles in the Alpha Fly, but today back in the Adidas, trying to get these up to 100 miles for that special review coming very soon. So seven miles today, 
I think pace was about eight minutes, five seconds per mile average. I think it was about that. Average heart rate was way down on this, about 136 beats per minute. Just taking it really easy out there today in this shoe that I can't quite decide whether I like it or not. Some days it's wonderful and other days it's not. It's a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde shoe for me. Anyway, more of that later in the week. You've probably noticed I've been sheared here. Well, with the difficulty in finding a hairdresser recently, I got Mrs. Headbud to shear me with the clippers. He has had one strange side effect though, viewers. I do feel a little lightheaded. So a few viewer questions to answer about this beautiful looking shoe, the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. Mm. So Rich K on YouTube has asked about the sizing of the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. He mentioned that he was an eight and a half in Nike shoes, but needed a nine in the New Balance 1080 V10. Rich, I'm very much in the same boat as you. I went up half a size in the New Balance 1080. I wished I'd gone up half a size in the Rebel as well, and I'd say probably the same in this. The half size up for me was perfect. I just find New Balance shoes, they just run a little short. Certainly for me, it could be a combination of perhaps my foot width as well as the length. But yeah, I went up half a size. If that works for you in Nikes, I think it might work for you. Um, the same as me. Mike Schofield asked about the heel counter on the Fuel Cell TC. Mike said he struggles a little bit with heel counters on shoes. Sometimes he has to cut stuff away at the back here. I know Mo Farah actually had some issues with that a couple of years ago. He used to do a bit of sort of chopping away at the end of his Pegasus shoes to get them to stop rubbing on his Achilles. So Mike, there is a plastic heel counter in here. It ends just kind of where this suede section is here. It kind of stretches round to just past where the end of the New Balance is, round about here. Curves round here, I hope that's clear. You can kind of see it actually better on the camera. It's quite rigid at the back, but obviously where it gets thinner here, it's not quite as pronounced. Certainly not one of the most rigid heel counters that I've encountered. It certainly feels nice though in terms of the suede effect here. I think it makes this shoe one of the beautiful ones. Again, over on YouTube, Living the Negative Split asks, how does the midsole of the New Balance Beacon size up against the Fuel Cell TC? So we're pitting the Fuel Cell foam against the fresh foam. I'd suggest the Fuel Cell is somewhat softer to the touch. Your finger kind of falls into the side of the midsole on this one, like a slightly firm marshmallow. I'd say it's a bit more comparable to Zoom X, this foam in the midsole. It really is, actually. Um, it's probably the most comparable thing I've found to Zoom X. It's close to the Fuel Cell Rebel, certainly, in feel, but I think the added stack height here and the carbon plate add quite a bit more squash here. This It's quite a bit more forgiving. The stuff in the beacons are tad firmer. Uh, it's still lovely and light on foot, really. It's still a very versatile shoe, the Beacon. I think the version one probably for most people has been the better of the two. I think for training and for sort of daily use, you can't lose with the Beacon. Perhaps some longer runs you can do in those at lower paces. I think many people now have seen the light of the Beacon. Last up, Ebola Mordi has asked about the lack of the lace loop on the tongue. Nils Mar commented that a lot of people have been using the air ventilation holes here as a sort of makeshift lace loop on the tongue. I have to say, I've tried that out. It does seem to work okay. It's not ideal, really, but it does work. Rather than get Mr. Bud to get a sewing needle out and potentially damage them. So thanks, Nils Ma, for the heads up on that one. I'll continue using that method for the time being and get back to you guys with a little more information once I've got some more miles into this shoe. Right, that's about all for today, guys. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. But first, We've got a musical interlude. I don't know if any of you did catch the Suede joke earlier on. Suede, really great band. One of my favourites, actually, from the 90s. And now, actually, they're producing some super material now. I did recently go to see uh, Brett Anderson, the singer. He's written a couple of books recently, um, all about his life, really, from sort of being a very young chap through to breakup of Suede and what he's doing now. Really interesting, really interesting character. He gave some real insight into what happened with the band and some of his views on stuff now. I think he's a bit of a runner as well. I put this great album back onto my Apple Watch. It's Suede Sci-Fi Lullabies. It's a compilation of B-sides and non-album tracks that were released up to about, probably about 98, something like that. There's some brilliant songs on here, which Brett Anderson actually mentioned he wished had been on the original debut Suede album. My Insatiable One, To The Birds, The Big Time, High Rising, The Living Dead. There's some fantastic tunes on here. Do check out this album. 
It's got some of Suede's best stuff on it. Um, I think sometimes, I think even Brett Anderson mentioned that he felt that they'd put some material onto the albums that wasn't quite as good as their best stuff. They were trying to satisfy record labels, things like that. People wanted three minute pop tunes, but a lot of these things are not three minute pop tunes. They're really interesting compositions, different instrumentation, just really striking tracks. It's probably not the best running music, but hey, check it out anyway if you're a fan of great tunes. It's time for me to depart. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications if you haven't done so already. Give the video a thumbs up like and comment below with any questions. Make sure you share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.